Jack is my oldest son and he's my picky eater. Surprisingly, he likes this meatloaf because it tastes a lot like meatballs, right? Would you agree with that? Tastes like meatballs? Yeah. So it's made with ground beef, ground pork, and bacon. The nice thing with the bacon is that it kind of creates that smoky, delicious flavor inside of the meat. And the fat from the bacon just kind of melts in, helps make it super moist and delicious, and it makes it have kind of that meatball taste. We're gonna start by sauteing our onion and celery, which I finally diced. So let's get to making it, it's pretty easy. We just gotta um, saute our onion and celery and then we basically just mix everything together with our hands. So let's get started. So in our bowl we have uh, a pound and a half of ground beef, a pound of ground pork, and three strips of thick sliced bacon that's diced up. So to that we're gonna add one egg, slightly beaten, so you can pour that in there. and a quarter cup of chopped parsley, and a teaspoon of Worcestershire, which mm -hmm. I will open up for you. There, do you want to pour it in? Teaspoon of Worcestershire. All right, now we're gonna need a quarter cup of uh, Parmesan cheese, and I'm just gonna eyeball it. Maybe just a little more. Um, cup of panko. I like using panko over regular like Italian breadcrumbs because it's got more surface area. It's a little bit bigger of a crumb, and it really is a good binder. You can find panko in the Asian section of the grocery store. It's also even with the regular breadcrumbs. All right, we're gonna put in some black pepper. about a teaspoon, and then we're gonna need two teaspoons of salt, which I'm just going to eyeball that. And we're gonna put in our onion and uh, celery mixture with the garlic. I'm going to gently mix this all together. I don't wanna over mix um, either, because I don't want it to get tough. But I just wanna incorporate all of these ingredients. So the celery and onion, and garlic that we sauteed. I let that cool for about five minutes and then I toss that in with our other ingredients. My pan with aluminum foil and I'm just going to mound this up. Okay, so we're just going to mound this up into a loaf type of shape. Just make sure it's even. Okay, now we're gonna make the glaze that's gonna go on top of the meatloaf. So we're gonna need a quarter cup of tomato paste. So I'll squeeze that in. I'm just eyeballing this because I know about how much that is. All right, a quarter cup of tomato paste. Now we're gonna need a teaspoon of ground mustard. All right, Jack, you're gonna get four teaspoons of brown sugar. One more. Okay, if you'll put in two teaspoons of Worcestershire into that bowl. Two of those. Nice work. So one, two. All right, then we're gonna need two tablespoons of white stilled vinegar. That's all right. All right, and then we're gonna need two tablespoons of water, two. And then we just need half a teaspoon of salt. So we're gonna mix that all together and it's gonna make a glaze that's gonna go over the top of the meatloaf. And I'm using this OXO pastry brush, which is awesome because I'm using it on raw meat. I can put it in the dishwasher and sterilize it after I'm done. Okay, now we're just going to brush the glaze that we made over the top. Just gonna bake it at 350 for about an hour or until an instant read thermometer reads 145 degrees.
Here's that gorgeous meatloaf pulled out of the oven. Then we slice it up and eat. <laughs>